Hi, it's Wayne O'Keefe from howtofish.com.au and I'm fishing the Barwon River on an early morning session. There's a tiny breeze so the water is very very glassy. Uh, the water's flowing through fairly well. We've had a lot of rain and what that has done is apart from putting more water into the system so that's flowing through pretty fast a lot of weed in there so there's a couple of tricks you can do to contend with weed when you're fishing to make sure that your, your bait is presented uh, and I'll, I'll talk about those uh, later but what I've got is two standard uh, setups I've got my survival gear set up on one rod um, with a small hook and uh, a small piece of bait and then I've got a standard paternoster rig over here uh, with larger hooks on it so on one side I've got a size 14 hook on this side I've got size 8 and size uh, 4 hooks so two two hooks on this one one hook on that one and I'm fishing the target today is mullet now when you're f uh, fishing um, weedy waters one of the things to do is keep as much line out of the water as possible so keep your rods high the more line in the water the more that can get um, can, weed can collect on now the, the other thing is if you can find a spot where there's a bit of a dip so you don't have to cast that far out where I'm casting right now it's only about less than a quarter probably you know I don't know a sixth of the way out because I want to keep my um, my tackle in shallow so there's not much as much weed flowing through and the other thing I'll do then is obviously I have to fish into a hole or something a bit deeper because because I'm so so close to the bank it's not going to be very very deep water but I need a spot where bait will collect so I've walked the banks found a bit of a spot found a bit of a hole and that's where I'm casting Yeah, so that's probably only about a metre and a half deep, but that is enough uh, to catch mullet and things like that, which will, when the tide is uh, relatively high, they'll come in close to feed on um, the uh, areas closer in where all of the crustaceans are, smaller fish take, uh, uh, taking uh, refuge. There is um, quite a bit of weed. There's a patch of weed going along here. I'm fishing over the other side of that but that weed is what will hold a lot of food. So the fish will come into that. When the water is covering it and a bit deeper they want to come in and try and feed there. So that's what I've been looking for and I'm just fishing on the other side of that. Now as you can see I'm starting to get bites on this rod here. Small, very very small hits. <clears throat> Just hold that. These fish are not committing suicide, that's for sure. They really, <clears throat> they really need you to, um, to strike into them. I can feel it hitting, but it's hitting and dropping as they often do. Well, I've just just got here this morning and just putting my bait in and the first fish off the bat is a mullet. Hey, this one's on and I think it's the unfortunate thing. Oh jeez. Oh wow. Well, I lost not the one that was a lot bigger than I thought. <laughs> Unfortunate, but uh, uh, that's the case. Oh, I must admit that um, I usually light line it because I'm expecting to get mullet. Um, I had slightly bigger hooks on that rod and I got something just too big to get in. <laughs> I would love to have known what that was, um, but anyway, the line wasn't just just I just didn't have the strength of line to actually uh, to pull that one in. So every now and again, there's some big fish in here, and I've just got a mullet, I think. As I get him into the shallows, I have a look. Uh, yeah, 
Okay, so conditions are good. There's also Bad. plenty of these around. It's toady. Oh my goodness, they are so big at times and they love your bait. Now, as soon as I'm casting in with the burly, I'm getting a lot of lots of little rat -a -tat tats but of course you can't strike until the uh, the hook's in the mouth. So you've got to you've got to time it till you feel the resistance and then pull into it, which is very hard when they're tiny little little taps. I can feel them. So these are probably smallish mullet, and uh, I do want to you know I want to catch a little a few fish before I go today, just simply because I don't have much time and I like to catch fish. And I'm just feeling little tiny hits. This is so hard, and you know I probably get about. One in five of these, I think. Where I'm just feeling, feeling the action on the rod and then striking it. That's all you can do. And you don't have to do a really hard jerking strike. All you've got to do is a soft strike coming up. Just enough, just enough pressure to move that hook in. If you pull it too fast, you may pull it out of the, the fish's mouth. Um, but every day seems to be different. Well, I managed to get that one. Not a big fish at all. In fact, fairly small, but it's just, it takes a lot of those hits. So, you know, one in five. <laughs> and uh, when they splash you, it's very refreshing, but it's a bit of fun in the morning. Okay, well, just got another one. Small mullet, and look, I must admit, that's one of the first things that the, uh, the burley will bring in. This one's a bit better. This fish. Um, and I've got I've got a really light trace on, so I've got to be a bit careful about this. And he's going to tangle under my other line. Oh, great! But uh, yeah, this is slightly slightly better, I'd say. Oh, it's going under my other line. Uh, oh, it's a nice a nice mullet. Now, I think this is a PB mullet for me. That's a yellow eye mullet and probably about the biggest I've ever caught. Isn't that fantastic? Look at that. That was caught on my survival gear, size 14 hook, a pre-stretched trace and burly. And wow, that was beautiful. Look at the size of that. Now, that, I'll put it back, but that really is a keeper. So now that um, uh, I've been casting in a few times and got the burley in there, uh, the fish are actually waiting virtually for the burley to land next time round. So I'll just cast this in, show you how quickly it happens. Okay, let's get her out there. This is out there to my spot. And back down. Now, the mo now that it's gone in, Burley's really doing its job, so the fish are in the area waiting, practically. So you can see the moment that um, that I've got it in there, they're getting white. So what I've got to do now is just uh, try and hook into these. And I think I missed that. Let's see if I did. No, I got that one. Okay, another little mullet. And that's what I've got out there waiting for me. Okay, I'm into another one. And uh, another mullet. Oh. Now, when you're fishing and there are there is weed about, look, there's a couple of things that you can do. It's it's difficult to fish into weed, but if it's the only time you've got, then you, you do some of the things that I do. One, you try and find a spot, a deeper hole that's close in, so you don't have to cast as far out. The more line you have in the in the water, the more weed you're going to get, because all it does is it comes along, it hits your line, and then slides down. Now, if you work, if you have a paternoster rig, what will happen is, as the the weed hits the line and runs down, the first thing it's going to do is get caught on that first dropper, and it's going to cover that, and if it'll cover, or well, it could uh, completely cover that hook.
the best thing to do when you're uh, when you're fishing in those conditions is have a standard through line running line um, rig which is what I've done here I've got my burley cage <clears throat> first that's my my sinker okay and then after that I've got my hook length and my hook and bait so this is just a standard running line the bait is down here at the end so what will happen is most of the weed is going to come along catch that and it's going to land over the top of my burly cage what it will do is it'll leave the bait exposed there's not much line there for the actual um, weed to catch on in actual fact what will happen is this will be lying on the ground so the actual weed will stop at the burley cage if you do that most of the time you'll have your bait exposed for longer you're always going to have the weed there but you won't have the problem where you cast in with your paternoster rig and both snoods get covered up with uh, with weed and therefore you're not presenting anything to the fish really important hint but I tell you what it does make a big difference because um, I've fished it at points before where people have had standard paternoster rigs and not caught much and I've caught a few more simply because I think my bait has been exposed and the fish have found it. So use that next time you go fishing in um, water where there's a lot of weed flowing through and uh, you know you're struggling to actually get a bite. Wow, well, these little bites are hard to hit. But I think I might have that one. Yes I do. Very very light strike into that fish. And it's a little mullet. There's a few of these small ones about. But that was just a very gentle little strike. Well, another small one. Another little mullet. <coughs> if you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. If you're interested in the gear that I've got, the burly bait, spicy chicken formula, which is what I've used today to catch most of these fish, go to my website, howtofish.com.au, and have your look in there under the shop, you'll see all of those things available. Okay, catch you next time.